Time now for ETF Spotlight. We're taking a look at the retail sector. The ticker there is the XRT. It's up over 5% this year. Target, Dollar Tree, Ross Stores, TJX, all trading near all-time highs, uh, at least on Friday. So one question, of course, is can the momentum for some of those names continue? Joining us now to discuss, Storch Advisors CEO and former Toys R Us Chairman and CEO Gerald Storch. Gerald, always good to have you, even uh, if you're not here on set. Um, before we get to broader retail, I just love your take this morning because you used to run uh, Hudson Bay. They, I'm sure you've seen it, uh, you know, the special committee, they've agreed to a deal to go private. Does that make sense to you? Well, look, uh, you know, Hudson Bay runs department stores principally. And if you take a look at uh, even the most recent data from September retail sales, you saw department stores as a group were down 6% year over year in sales. It's a big decline. And if you look at the unadjusted data, they're down 7%. So it's a very difficult sector right now. C customers are moving away from department <laughs> stores. And I think a lot of people believe, I know the Nordstrom family believes the same thing, that if you can take some of these companies private, they have a chance to, to shape the future and make the investments you need without uh, so much concern over quarterly results. Do you believe that? Do you think as, you know, that that's a real possibility? I mean, you're obviously taking on more debt when you go private as well, which increases your pressure to a certain extent. Are there really things, Jerry, you can do in the private markets with these retailers that are facing such significant issues that you can't do publicly? Look, department stores are a difficult space. I think luxury is a little better because you have more exclusivity in the products. But department stores and apparel in general are quite troubled right now. Having said that, I've run private companies, I've run public companies, and I can tell you, you can have a longer time horizon when you're running a private company. You don't have to worry quite as much about what they're going to think at the next earnings call. Um, what, do, what do you think, make the likes then of a, of a Macy's, for example, which has been in the current dialogue, not the momentum way that we were just talking about when I intro, introduced you, but obviously concern about their place in the mall and the continued concerns overall about mall traffic. I mean, is that Truthfully, something as I, well that, uh, you know, tell me what? I, yeah. don't, I don't care how good you are. And I think Macy's is a fine management team. I think Nordstrom is a fine management team. Of course, I think Hudson Bay is a fine management team. But I don't care how good you are right now. Department stores in a very tough place. Customers are moving away from the mall, onto the Internet. They're moving to discount chains. Retail sales are very strong. I know there was a lot of hand-wringing when the results came out uh, last week for September sales looking at month-to-month -month adjusted numbers and saying they were down three-tenths of one percent. But I don't pay a lot of attention to month-to-month -month numbers because they bounce around all over the place. And in fact, they upgraded the August numbers by two-tenths of one percent. I look at the year-over-year -year numbers. And when you look at year-over-year -year retail sales, actually September is one of the strongest months we've had in a long time. It was up over four percent. And if you look at unadjusted numbers, it was a similar up four percent. And that's what retailers re report. Unadjusted year-over-year -year numbers, that's comp store sales, which is the strongest sign of health in the economy. But having said that, there are winners and losers. You're going to see great numbers out of the discount chains. Walmart, Target, Costco, uh, off-price players, TJ Maxx, uh, Home Depot again, a Dollar General, the value players. And look at the e-commerce numbers. They were up 12.9% adjusted year-over-year -year for September. If you look at the unadjusted number again, which is really real dollars, they were 15.7% month over net. So if anything, all the trends we've talked about are just accelerating. The internet is growing faster than ever. The value players are doing great. Department stores and mall-based apparel are in a load of trouble. Jerry, I want to get your thoughts. I mean, we do have these looming proposed December tariffs that are still set to go into place, and there are tariffs. Uh, and potential rate increases that could still happen before the year is out. I wonder what you think it means in terms of inventory. Are we seeing or are we going to see a pull forward in inventory by the retailers? And I ask that because it could have big implications, not just for the companies themselves, but also for the macroeconomic data. Yeah, I think there might be a little bit of that. I, I think most retailers are smarter than that and they buy the trend. You always have to. And I do believe what, look, no one can say tariffs are a good thing. But I do believe, and I've said this before, that the impact of these tariffs is somewhat overstated. When you take a look, look, retail prices actually are showing no inflation at all to speak of, right? Producer prices are showing no inflation at all to speak of. And I do believe when you take a look at the amount of goods subject to these tariffs, it's about 3% of uh, consumer spending. And when you take uh, you know, 10 or 15% or 3%, it really disappears in the overall consumer economy. There may be individual companies very highly affected by this, and they're going to do everything they can 
to mitigate it, they're going to negotiate with their suppliers. They're going to bring some goods for it, but they're not going to, I can't believe they'd be that stupid as to bring in, you know, inventory that's going to turn bad fast. That's the, that's the biggest mistake a retailer can make. So I hope they don't do too much of that. But they're going to do everything they can think about, move for it, whatever they can do to mitigate this. But I don't believe this is the giant macro factor you keep hearing about. The uncertainty, that's a big factor, by the way, which the people don't know where it's going. But what's been done so far, it really becomes a rounding error when you look at the numbers.